Welcome back to Cocktails and Classics. I'm Dylan. Joining me as always is Cam and Ben. And this week, last week, we did Dune. And I mentioned that I had never seen Christopher Reeve Superman movies. And Ben suggested we should watch Superman for the podcast. Here we are watching Superman the movie to kick things off and get everybody in the right mood. We're going to go to this week's cocktail. It is the Black Superman. Are they actually going to make... Are they going to make this one, or are they just going to talk about putting it in development for a couple years and then just let it go away, like they did with the movie? The second one. Not bitter, sounds like. Sorry, Michael B. Jordan. No movie for you. <laughs> I will say Michael B. Jordan, I feel like, talks about making a lot of movies, and then a lot of them don't come out. <laughs> this one moved, I think, pretty far along, but then the whole, uh, you know, shenanigans Strikes with... stuff. Well, the whole Warner Brothers doing a bunch of weird shit and then canceling a bunch of things, and then they brought James Gunn in, and I think right now that movie's just kind of sitting in limbo. The Black Superman is a cocktail that gained popularity in the 70s and 80s, often associated with disco culture. Its name is believed to be inspired by the song Black Superman, Muhammad Ali by Johnny uh, Wakelin and the Kinsa Band, which was a hit in the 1975. Uh, this cocktail's a favorite among those who enjoy a strong, fruity drink, with a little bit of a kick. It's a powerful, full-bodied cocktail with a sweet, fruity taste and a strong alcoholic undertone. It's a combination of tropical fruit flavors, dark rum, giving it a unique, rich flavor profile. I feel like I'm reading like an AI-generated statement here. Might be. <laughs> but uh, to make one, it's two ounces of dark rum, two ounces of pineapple juice, two ounces of orange juice, a tablespoon of grenadine, I and mean, you make it in a highball glass. What's not to love? Yeah, If you want to do a... If you don't have dark rum, you want to do like a little even further tropical variation, you could use coconut rum and really just go full blown into the sweet uh, tropical flavors. But yeah, there's not, I, I mean, obviously some of the ones were like throwing it, were like in the movie, they drink whiskey and, and here's a whiskey cocktail that this one, the, the title. He doesn't, he says it himself, man. He doesn't drink. Yeah. Doesn't you know, drink, he's doesn't over, lie, doesn't smoke. He's over 21. He doesn't drink. That's all you got to know. And he likes the color pink. Don't forget that. Does like the color pink. He likes <laughs> pink underwear. He didn't say that. Oh, he didn't say that. <laughs> no. He just said he uh, likes he was, the color pink. In fact, he said, he w he was just asked, do you like pink? And then he said, yes. In context to something else. <laughs> well, yeah, but even then, he didn't bring that up in the first place. No, no. You Lois forget that he's socially inept. No, Lois Lane is fucking cringe lord. <laughs> the how, whole interaction was cringy. How, how but big are you? On, I let's... mean, tall. <laughs> huh? Yeah. What color underwear <laughs> am I wearing? I thought that was going to go a different direction. And he was like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> also, who, no, who, makes, weird. Le, who makes planters out of lead? Uh, it's the... I don't know what time period it was. It, takes it was the... Action. I mean, it was the 70s. They were making it's shit out of whatever they had. Yeah. How everything was lead paint, lead paint and asbestos, baby. Yeah, build that shit kids to lead last. paint, paint chips. Yeah, mmm, yummy. Mm. Tastes like iron. Sea salt and vinegar, lead chips. <laughs> <laughs> they do do the. They're like, ah, oh, don't smoke. Why lung cancer? <laughs> Not yet. But you might get <laughs> you cancer. Paint you, might, you might get cancer from the X rays I'm currently bumping into your body. <laughs> <laughs> if you were a loved one to have mesothelioma please call this number now <laughs> what's the new one if you were a loved one at Camp Lejeune between the years of 1990 and uh. 2002 call now uh, well if you're looking for a tropical drink and you want to kind of get in the mood for uh, to watch the Superman movie make yourself a black Superman check the show notes below for the recipe um, and you can hit the casker links to get yourself some uh, rum delivered directly to your door and uh head over to instagram send us a picture of your black superman check out superman the movie on max as a recording um because we're gonna spoil it it's all right it's a what 50 year old movie at this point there's not a ton to. i haven't seen it either though so there's not a ton to spoil the only one and i feel like a lot of i mean the biggest part of this at the ending i feel like has been riffed on a, a ton i forgot that this movie ended in the way it did <laughs> So yes. I was at least kind of surprised when it got there. I thought I thought it was the second one that did that. Or do they do it in both? There's no way they get away with that in both. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. They do it in both? Um, yes. I I don't know. Okay. I can't remember um, if they actually do it in the second one, but here's what I can tell you. I have watched the Donner cut of the second movie, and in one of the cuts they do it. I, I can't remember which one. I think it's the Donner cut of Superman 2. Okay. I was going to say, like, I know everyone, like, hates or just disliked Superman 2, and I thought it was because of that. But maybe it's because they redo that whole ending again, which we can get to into uh, get to into a second. Um, Superman is a 1978 uh, action adventure sci fi film based off the comic books by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, written by Mario Puzo, directed by Richard Donner. It's the story of an alien orphan who's sent from his dying planet to Earth, where he grows up to become his adoptive home's first and greatest superhero. Currently sits at a 7.4 out of 10 on IMDb. It was nominated for three Oscars, Best Sound, Best Film Editing, and Best Music Original Score. And then it won a Special Achievement Award for Visual Effects. So not something you would like be nominated for and win, but it stars Christopher Reeve as Clark Kent Superman, Margot Kidder as Lois Lane, Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor, Marlon Brando as Jor-El, Ned Beatty as Otis... Jackie Cooper as Perry White, a Terrence Stamp as uh, General Zod for like a half minute. Does he come back later? I guess just spoil it for me now, Ben. Oh, yeah. So okay. um, we can talk about this now, I guess, if you want to get into this. They kind of filmed these movies like one and two very much at a lot of the same time. Well, at the end, doesn't it say co- coming next year, Superman 2? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they, yeah. they did a lot of them like like most of it was already shot. By at the same time they were filming one, uh, they so called a Harry Potter one and two. So General Zod is is the bad guy in the second one. That's good. Hopefully, it's a better bad guy than Lex Luthor in this one. General Zod in the, the in Superman two is is phenomenal. They bring back, and I kind of forgot the things that he says of you know like the. You will bow down before me, Jor-El. I swear it. No matter that it takes an eternity. You will bow down before me, both you, and then one day, your ass! That's the famous, you will kneel before Zod. That's where that whole thing, I didn't, I forgot that they kind of set that up in the first, like, ten minutes of this movie, too. Yeah, the second one plays a lot more with the the three Kryptonians. I don't think Lex Luthor was necessarily a bad villain, per se in this but i think they like the tone of this movie is so all over the place i feel like yeah that's the problem with lex though is first off i he's he's like in an underground he's like living in the subway you know like that's kind of weird start to this guy um who's like the head of a multinational corporation and then, yeah, like, as you said, the tone with him is all weird. He's very serious, but he has this, like, but not that serious, because he, like, does weird quips. And then he has a sidekick guy who's, like, a bumbling idiot who's, like, a comic relief, but he's not that funny. And then he has a woman hanging around that's, like, dressed in... Has literally nothing to do with anything. <laughs> and she just, like, yeah, she's just around to, like... I can't dress she's around like, in like eye candy. scantily clad yes. clothing. Like that's it. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say she's she's eye candy. So the whole and then... the whole shtick just feels bad. Like it's like this is, I don't know. I just yeah. was not a fan of it at all. The issue they had with Lex Luthor is that I'm not super familiar with a ton of of what Superman was like in the 70s. I don't know what Lex's ordeal was at that point i don't know that he was like the businessman mil- billionaire type that he is now or it kind of has been in the comics for a while as much as i think he was kind of in a weird transition between like evil scientist and business tycoon type character so I can't say for sure what he was in the comics at this point, because that might have been closer to what his character was back in the mid '70s when they were writing this. Um, well, it's weird because he's like 
he's got that like whole underground like subway train under under the city city thing that he's living in but then like he's buying all that land so he has money right or and he's just he kind of on the lamb because the people are like looking for him like the cops are trying to get him but are they looking for him I... yeah at the very beginning that's what they're that's what they're doing when the one cop dies the guy like um, tails otis which again could also mean that i mean that money might not have come legally. Yeah. I mean, it's, they, they've, they talked about them breaking into the museum and things like that. So, I mean, it's possible too. And yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to sit here and say that this movie's writing is perfect. I think they just did him so wrong in this movie. Like, like well, I said, I don't think as Lex in general, he's bad. I think his portrayal in this movie's bad. Yeah. I, th- I think, it's Gene Hackman, right, that plays yeah. him. I think yeah. I think he's fine. I think his like motives are fine. Like, oh, I'm gonna kill people and I'm gonna blow off California to build. I mean, that's definitely old ass. Use me for land development. Yeah, I was gonna say that's so old, <laughs> like superhero. Yeah, that's such an old. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna blow up half of California so I can sell land. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna, bro. I'm gonna commit mass murder to do some white collar. <laughs> Man, cry for something. <laughs> Just wait until you guys watch Superman 2. Or if you oh, really want to hate yourself, go ahead and watch uh, 2005 Superman Returns. Also, I really love... Oh, where's the other missile going? Oh, it's going to this place in New Jersey. Lex, my mother lives in Hackensack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're okay. All right. I'll be honest. My biggest takeaway rewatching this movie... I forget how little Superman is actually in this fucking movie. Yeah. Yeah. You don't see him until like the first half hour of the movie. It's literally almost the 30 minute mark that you see him. And even then he just kind of flies out of the fortress of solitude and then it's back to Clark Kent. Um, And then, yeah, you kind of see him do like, you know, when he does the, the helicopter rescue the montage. Yeah. Oh, I he, was thinking before that where he does the montage of saving, or is it after that? He does the montage of saving people. It's after. It's after yeah. And then at the end of the movie, he does another montage of saving people uh, all along the San And then Andreas doesn't line. save Lois Lane and is like, oh, my God, I didn't save her. It's like, dude, you could have, though. <laughs> you just needed to go there first. What? It's good in parts, I'll say. Like, I, I do I need the whole, like, 25-minute intro for who Superman is and all that? I mean, I guess maybe because this was the first movie. I actually enjoyed that part. I actually liked that part. I liked Marlon Brando as Jorel, the dad. Jor-El. Yeah, I liked him as Jorel. I actually didn't mind that part. Um, I just so, felt a little long. So for the whole movie, I, it was a little long. But this is like this first screen. Ever. Is this the first superhero movie ever? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I mean, one of the first big ones, probably. Yeah. It's like the genesis of what we know, I feel like, as a superhero movie now. Yeah, so so if you think about it, before this, you had um, the, the last, like, big screen superhero movie, at least of, like, mainstream superheroes, would have been in the 60s. So it had been probably about a decade. Because Batman 66, the, the movie, um, came out. But that also had the TV show to help establish what, what everything, you know... Not that they really went into a lot of depth on on Batman's background um, necessarily in that show, but by this point, yeah, there had not been, and I don't think, I mean, there had been cartoons and things like that for kids, but I mean, in terms of mainstream audiences, the serials in the four, no, never mind, the fifties uh, TV show with with uh, George Reeves would have been would have been it, but even then, yeah, that ended in the the later 50s so i mean it had been almost 20 years since mainstream audiences really knew anything about superman so it made sense also think about it um a couple different things to point out there was talk of the missile going off and everything happening almost as being a cliffhanger ending to the movie and then having the second one come out the next year picking up from there also the fact that superman 2 came out almost a year later like really quickly after and they were planning everything during if you look at superman one and superman two 
like as a as a joint piece you don't have to watch three and four in fact don't never never <laughs> watch them don't do it it the bad 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 um <laughs> but one and two kind of being this connected joint piece it makes a lot more sense for the second one that you have them establish what happened with krypton what with the council things with with general zod um you really need that and i i think it works better doing it here as you're explaining the entire origin story versus trying to retroactively go back and do it during superman 2 i i think this is one that was almost planned to be like a six hour movie that that was splitting in half i did not expect uh krypton to just like totally get fucked <laughs> like just the huge explosion i was like yeah. i was like oh man like you know they're gonna die like it's gonna you know like crumble or something and then it was just like no. <sighs> yeah like, oh no yeah um <laughs> krypton is really an interesting i i you know in the comic books it's very from what i remember of that time feels very still 50s sci-fi e um this felt to me so st- richard donner was like how do we make this feel like a star wars planet how do we do that black background miniature kind of painting dome shapes I, it very much felt like they were like how should we design krypton and they were like go watch a new hope a couple times uh, and then come back to me and, and show me what you think this this should be. Uh, while we're on the intro, the like three M hyper reflective outfits were was a weird choice, and I don't know if that's like a practical thing or if that's a like they did that in post because I feel like it's so reflective, it takes out like it underexposes all the faces, so you can't really see what else is happening in the frame. <laughs> it's just everyone else is like a highlighter. I just the bodies. <laughs> I don't know that they did it in post. Just also the fact that I I don't know, but like even when they did like the the reds in that as things were exploding, it looked very like a reflective, like a reflective red. Everything looked super reflective. Yeah, it was a weird. It was a it was a bit much, bit much. So I know we've kind of talked about this like in our friend group before when we like talk about like Marvel versus DC, that sort of stuff, like how Superman is kind of OP, like overpowered. So what is the deal with? Okay. So kryptonite. Yeah. Yeah. Is that from, that's from Krypton. Yes. Right. Like that is on the planet. Pieces of Krypton. And that's why they're not super powered there. No, no. So, They're not super powered there because their gravity is different and their atmosphere. They're not is super powered there okay. because they have a different sun. Yeah, it's okay. the effects of the sun is okay. what gives but Superman then, his his powers on Earth. But then, so the kryptonite, yes, is like the interior of Krypton. Kryptonite so like they never really is, experience it. Kryptonite is the, um, I I mean it's basically. So imagine just like an astro like like asteroid or something else that would fall to Earth, right? It was probably part yeah. of another celestial body at some point. Kryptonite is just pretty much that, but it's it's ra- like a radioactive meteorite that's falling. Because I'm trying to figure it. out like it's if, the since it's, I don't understand how Lex Luthor the radioactivity knew that Superman <laughs> that part was crazy <laughs> because he's like. That part I think doesn't make any put sense. It together with the radio because it's radio due to the explosion radioactive pieces of that I I'll be honest I I'm not 100% sure how they they put that together um well Lois just like put all the secrets out in the world yeah, it's like oh, I yeah. can't look she through a lead planner. Straight She's up, from Krypton. Straight up, put him on blast. Um, <laughs> it blew. It blew up in like fifty five. So then he got here. Yeah, but I still don't understand how Lex Luthor was like. Oh, he's from Krypton. This radioactive rock that we found on Earth around the same time. That's his weakness because it's radioactive. It's like, how do you know that? He's how an do you IQ know, of two hundred. Possibly know dense that. Fuck. 
You're just too dumb. <laughs> he didn't You're show it. You're just too dumb to he get it. He didn't show it in the movie. <laughs> He's so smart. Why did he hire that dumb fuck to, to like not do anything right? <laughs> and he kept him around. Because it's cheap, Cam. It's cheap labor. But he should know that he should pay. That's an investment, and that will return dividends. Can't do it. I'm just trying to figure out why, like, they would have never interacted with the kryptonite in on their home planet to where it like affects them because like it does on Earth because the because yes. it hadn't exploded yet. Right? Yes, like the kryptonite is pieces of from krypton ex- that like were it's from like the when interior it, planet. Core when it exploded is when, when it, it exploded. exploded is when it basically became Went radioactive. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. All yeah. Right. That makes, all right. That makes more sense. Right. I'm just. Yeah. So basically, I was just like, huh, it's from his home planet. How would he have so, never, so like... Krypton's there, and then the whole, like, Chernobyl explosion happens and sends everything out, and that's when they become It's like the San Andreas places. Fault. When when two continents yeah. start to collide, it causes... Yes. A, no. <laughs> exactly. And that's why we get earthquakes sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, we've we've kind of discovered this. Like Cam and I, this is our first time ever watching this movie. Ben, I I'm sure you've watched this <laughs> numerous times. Your dad's a comic book guy. You're a comic book guy. Like, yeah, yeah. I have the DVD collection of all four. Um, it's weird. It's weird that like two of those are probably really used, and then two of them aren't used at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I watched a couple minutes of Superman three and was like, nah. And then Superman 4, I saw trailers for and was just, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all right. I have no need. The Superman movies throughout that time after, like, Superman 2, it was like the Marvel Universe after Endgame, where it's like, you know what? People are kind of sick of it, but we're going to beat this horse till it stops spitting out money, you know? (laughs) Let's throw in Richard Pryor. Yeah, what could go wrong? (laughs) <laughs> hey, what if we took Superman and we split him and we also put in Dark Superman? That would be pretty cool. People will <laughs> love to watch that. Oh, they didn't love to watch that? Okay, I guess maybe... Well, maybe we'll do another one. Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> the, then the Christopher Reeve accident happened and that's kind of when we stopped. But I have a feeling even though Superman 4 flopped, they they would have they would have kept going. The scene in the Arctic when Clark throws the thing, we get the Fortress of Solitude. That was a twelve-year gap where he like learns all the knowledge in the world. <laughs> twelve years, which is pretty crazy. I mean, he was on his flight from he was a baby, and then all of a sudden he was a little boy. <laughs> like, Dude, and then they, like three years when I think they, they discover said, him, yeah. and he's just like t posing like Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs, like in the mirror. <laughs> I was like, "What? The, why is? Why do we see a naked boy here? I don't want to see seventies <laughs> man." Uh, the seventies were a wild time. Uh, yeah, I said uh, Lex Luthor is kind of corny as fuck in this movie. It's bad. He that's probably one of my main complaints about the movie is Lex Luthor's bad. Honestly, I didn't like Lois Lane that much either. I feel like she was just like too horny. She was too horny. Yeah, I think that was the problem. Well, and, she was way too horny. Well, it's funny because like. I don't know. So I think Christopher Reeve does an amazing job with like the the duality yeah. of Superman. Like there's the scene where he's talking to Lois at her apartment yeah. after she meets Superman and he's kind of like takes off the glasses and he's like, Lois, there's something I have to tell you. And then she ignores him completely and he's uh, like, then I decided, well, darn it. I was going to show you the time of your life. <laughs> he does a really good job kind of like separating like the totally awkward, like kind of little hunched over Clark Kent yeah. and then like the straightened like superhero deep voice Superman, so but people off camera were were they'd kind of all said that the like no one no one's gonna get the whole he puts on glasses and that's the only difference like there's no no one's gonna recognize this and then they they were talking with christopher reeve when he was in like the clark kent hunched over and talking and then they said when he took the glasses off and stood up it they were like holy shit Holy shit! Like you're you're a completely different fucking person. <laughs> and they're like, okay, no, we we believe it. It makes sense. We get it. We get how this works now. Well, and part of it too is like not like yeah, that's the meme. But I mean, as you said, it's like, can you imagine like the most like milk toast guy in your life is Superman? <laughs> like, no, you would never fucking believe it. Be like, man, Dylan's Superman. I just can't even believe that. Thanks. <laughs> But it's funny, like, Lois Lane is, like, super horn dog, 
she's super horn dog when yeah. he's Superman, and then when he's Clark Kent, she's just like, yeah, okay, whatever, dude. Like, I gotta go. I gotta be so like, <laughs> this is the ladies' room. Clark's nothing. Clark oh, yeah. is literally nothing. He is a trash. He <laughs> he is a piece of gum on the bottom of my like, shoe. He's a mild annoyance at best. Though. Like, like, like he could. <laughs> he said that to him. And he was like, she said that to him. It was like, Clark means nothing. He's like, oh. <laughs> um, like, he had to have been fighting back some tears there. Clark, that little bitch. That's what I said. Uh, I said, uh, Clark is about to cock block himself with his relationship with Lois when he goes to meet her as Superman. <laughs> Well, I mean, okay, if you think about it, though, like, Clark is not his real identity, so he probably wants to be in a relationship with her as Superman, but can't for obvious reasons. I guess? It's it's so interesting that they literally almost <clears throat> did this exact same thing um, in Batman Forever, where Bruce Wayne and Batman are both basically, like, with the same love interest, and, like, throughout different times, the one time... Like he's he's basically just trying to like work his way through it not being Batman to be like can like I, I don't want <laughs> I don't want her to be in love with Batman I want her to be in love with Bruce Wayne <laughs> so the, there's the famous yeah. meme of like the the Batman with like the almost the like the Macaulay Culkin looking smile do you guys know what I'm talking about I don't think so let me see if I can find it I'll drop it in the chat <laughs> wait maybe I do <laughs> okay yeah I know what you're talking about I can. <laughs> So this was just the first, like the first thing I found. Um, He's so gumpy. <laughs> <laughs> so the picture when he's got that stupid smile on his face, that's like right when she tells him, like it's it's me. I've met there's someone else. Like I've met someone else, and he means more to me. And like he walks out and he has the smile of just like I did it. But it just looks so it looks, it looks so bad. So stupid. It looks so terrible. Um that's, I have never I don't think I've ever seen that. That's, oh, that's what it reminds me of when you're just like, I'm gonna go pock block myself was just the picture of, of Val Kilmer's face and that stupid look. It's just like that stupid smile. <laughs> I just opened the I just I just opened the chat and and I just see I don't have the text from the top. I just have the it two pictures. And it's just the, the dichotomy of it is hilarious. Oh, oh okay. Alright, here you go. Here's here's the, for those of you for those of you who can't see for those oh, of you is. who can't see this because this is a podcast. Just look up the Batman Forever meme, and you'll know what we're talking about. I was say, just look up Batman Forever Smile. It's the first thing that came up for me. <laughs> the first thing. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> oh, oh, that's so horrible. Oh, my face hurts. Ben, I said, um, since we did Dune last week, the flying scene at night in here, the, like, king or, like, grease screen, whatever they did, this movie was... Oh, what six, eight years before? Six years before Dune? Uh, so this was seventy eight, yeah, and Dune was eighty four. Yeah, it doesn't look half as bad as Dune's like night green screen scene. Yes, I pointed out there is some of the flying scenes that there's a couple that really look rough. The running scene at the beginning is so fucking funny. <laughs> the running scene with the train is the worst. Honestly, I was kind of impressed. I was like, you know, this is not horrible. It's not horrible at all. For again, for the late seventies to to do some of the stuff that they did with the flying was was really good, really incredible. Some of it just does not age gracefully. The some of the scenes where you've got like the look over his shoulder and you can just tell it looks like they stuck something in front of the camera that was like yeah. the cutout of over his shoulder and then kind of just moved the camera around. Um, and then some of the other, like, I, I'm assuming, I don't know if it was necessarily green screen or how they rotoscoped him in there, but some of that just looked, ugh, ugh. I was a fan of the part where they green, where he flew up behind the, uh, railroad. That looked pretty bad. And then he got on the railroad and acted That's as a, a railroad piece on the ground. Yeah, like, it's just hmm. like, 
I feel like part of the problem is like because it's done on a wire, you literally cannot do like a natural like what you would do in the air. So it's literally like whenever he's turning, it's like kind of they're both turning. So it just kind of looks like if if you were on like an osprey, like that's kind of how it looks almost. The okay, that just that reminded me. Is it canonically accurate that Superman can transfer his flying powers? Like via touch? No, he's just that Not strong. That I'm aware. Of. I think he's just that he's strong. He's just that strong that he's holding her. I think holding his. Okay, he was holding the tip of he her he fingers held, with his he held a tip helicopter of his fingers. with one hand. I think he can hold Lois Lane by his finger. Okay, that was improbable too. That was improbable. But I said, okay, you know what? Like, if you think of it, like holding something, you know, like you could write that. But she was flying straight out like this, like with her arms it's out. It's because they were talking about Peter Pan and, and Wendy, and then she's in the blue dress, and they're doing the little fingertip to the sky. Like, I mean, I okay, <laughs> I get it, but it looked like it. She literally got yeah, power but then transferred. She fell. Like that was the yeah. whole thing, you know. Well, she fell after they let go. Exactly. Yeah. He wasn't holding her. Duh. That's that, that's <laughs> the whole point. All right, well, he wasn't touching her, her powers. She she wouldn't be flying. I'm not saying transferred, but uh, I'm just saying like it. Okay, the way the movie portrayed it was he is he is literally physically touching her, so this therefore man, she can fly. This man held That's a helicopter, like. literally terraformed the Earth, and you're questioning that he can hold a uh, like a hundred pound woman with his fingertips? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm saying how? Yeah, because okay, you he caught a bullet in it. <laughs> Okay, I don't care how strong you are. Oh, you God. can't make this oh, God. How straight am I doing with it? your hand oh, like this. Oh, my God. It's incredible. <laughs> no, no. It's like this. It's like this. It's more like this, where you're holding something, the very tip of your finger, and you're like, oh, okay, how do I make this piece of paper straight by holding it with the tip of my finger? It's not like that. It's not. He's not holding her underneath. That's not how it is. <laughs> Let me find. I'll find a picture. Hold on. Oh, Lord. Um, well, Richard Downer just wanted to make a really cool shot in the movie. And now we're going to sit here with a goddamn scalpel and dissect it like goddamn animals. Okay, here, it's not as good because there was a point where he was holding her fingertips. But here's a picture. They're literally holding hands. Okay, but she's a... How is she... It doesn't... None of it makes any sense. It it does kind of look like like a baby bird. Like like, That's what I'm saying. She's like in there like this, and she would have to straighten her body out. Like where he, she like it doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. Like I don't think it. I think the thing is, is that like she feels weightless in that photo, and you wouldn't be weightless. You would still be heavy. He's just carrying your weight, is what you're saying. Like that's like exactly. How is he? I don't. I just. She would be flopping <laughs> around. <laughs> She'd be flopping around. <laughs> Fish. Like she couldn't like right now this image she has to have insane core strength and arm strength to maintain that and that doesn't make any sense. I feel like we're nitpicking. There's a fucking alien in this movie. <laughs> I, fucking, I know, I know. This is a guy okay, who, all right, who all right. fucking but what I'm saying here okay. from a distant planet. It took him four years to get here. He watched <laughs> okay, he watched a but, video recording of but. his dad for twelve years. <laughs> To go to New York to be a writer. <laughs> okay, a but man, I can accept that. I can accept. Flew her okay. off the Earth the opposite direction is the way the world spins. Twice. To fucking He's in two time movies. travel. Okay, but... <laughs> to fucking time travel. But okay, no, I know. This is where we draw the line. <laughs> no, no, no. I haven't gotten to it yet. But that is the other time. That is the other part that I have an issue with. Is that's not how orbits Earth. work. <laughs> About its axis on the other, a- like it doesn't. That's not how this works. How does that it work? Doesn't. On it what? Like how is it, it possible? It was dumb when he tried to do it again in the second one. <laughs> it was terrible. It's been panned so bad by everyone. <laughs> so that's so yeah. That in this, these two things, because what it is is it's not a suspension of disbelief anymore. Kim, you don't understand. Jor El tells you up front that he has powers he doesn't know about. And being able to spin the earth backwards <laughs> to fix time <laughs> is that power. It's the it, you know what the you know what you know what Jarrell's biggest superpower was? The throwaway line, baby. The throwaway line that explains whatever you need it to. Uh, it was camp camps. I'm just rage posting <laughs> pictures, pictures of this. Of flying. <laughs> Yeah, Jarrell has the super <laughs> okay, has the okay, power to just be like, you have powers beyond your belief, and that power 
just so <laughs> happens to, I'm not going to tell you what it is, but we'll find out at the end of the movie. Turns out, spoiler, you can fix time, dude. Welcome to 70s Superman, where you can just, oh, we need Superman to do this crazy thing? Yeah, just give him another superpower. The dude had the dude had so many superpowers in the 70s, it was fucking ridiculous. I can buy, like, you know, there there's suspending disbelief, but then there's, like, breaking your own rules, right? Of, like, you know, it's not like these are superhumans, right? Like, how is she holding herself up like that? How is he holding her up like that? Like, it doesn't make any sense, right? I mean, it's the same thing with the revolving around the Earth. Like, it's like, okay, you can fly, you have x-ray vision. Like, you, like he has all these, like, physical traits, and then... Oh, also, I can spin around the Earth and somehow cause it to time travel backwards. I don't know. Like to me, it's like, uh, yeah. I mean, as you said, it um, it was rightfully panned, but it's just so comically bad. Like, I don't understand how anyone saw this and was like, "Yep, that's what we want." It's really cool. We're gonna ship it. Did anyone else find Lois and Superman stuff? Super, like, kind of cringe, in my opinion. This, the yeah. scene we're talking about here with the flying, the voiceover. Can you read my mind? Do you know what it is that you do to me? Here I am, like a kid out of school, holding hands with a god. I'm a fool. This was 100% a dude who was like, Bad. chicks are going to love this. Probably. <laughs> we really need to get women in the theater. I know. Let's just focus on the dude in spandex who's good looking. We should put more of him. In no, no, I've got it. Guys, check out this poem I wrote. It's going to bring <laughs> all of the chicks in. Like it just, it, it doesn't, <laughs> I feel like it doesn't fit at all. Especially the fact that it's it voiceover. Like we talked about this in Dune, all the use of voiceover. And then this where it was like, just kind of cringe. And I was like, oh God, like. Even if you're like in a, this love scene, I don't think we need that. We, I think we can infer from all the other th weird things you guys say to each other. I don't think we need this. <laughs> this man is still posting shit on the goddamn <laughs> physics of them flying in the chat. Let it go. Let it go. Look at Let the video. Look at the go. video. I watched. At, I watched. The I movie. look at where the video at the time. <laughs> No, but look at the video at the time that I put, okay? She is still flying comfortably as he is, as they are holding fingers. Fingers! Like, she is somehow maintaining, I know, I know, I know that I came back to it. I know, I'm sorry. But, like, they're holding on fingers and she's still cool up until the point where they let go and then she instantly... Maybe it's because her arms are out and they're traveling so fast. She's a bird. That it's if you're just, a bird, I'm a bird. It's just literally like <laughs> it's bird. it's more like the like if you put your your hands out like on a roller coaster, right? And it's just the wind pulling you back. Maybe she's got her arms out and that's just being pulled back like that. Again, I think she should be if this is how this is, I think she should be flopping around. <laughs> like, yeah, she'd be that's flopping what everyone wants to see them. in a movie theater. <laughs> it's just some lady <laughs> flopping around in the wind. <laughs> Like a, why, why like do you think a goddamn never... plastic bag, <laughs> <laughs> fucking American Beauty style of just just some thirty seconds of voiceover of her reading this fucking poem while she's just oh, fucking flopping around the screen. Her her cheeks are like. <laughs> <laughs> We're going so read, fast, Superman. Can you redraw your mind? <laughs> are you? I don't know who you are. <laughs> if you mean so unknown to me. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's exactly. Well, exactly. you think if he's reading her mind, is is he getting that's... all of that? Uh, is he getting like the wind resistance <laughs> in her thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> It would have been so much better if she was just dragged off. Or, or just, just imagine she's like, can you read my mind? Holy shit, how am I flying like this? Physically, it just doesn't make sense. Physically, it doesn't I mean, make I'm any not, sense. I'm not a doctor, but... 
<laughs> I'm not a pilot, but this doesn't make any sense. According to all known laws of aviation, <laughs> bees shouldn't be able to fly. <laughs> Their fat bodies are too big for their <laughs> tiny wings. <laughs> oh, I hope I hope whoever's listening to this is getting as much out of it as I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the movie would have been better for that because we because we would not have gotten the cheesy dialogue you just mentioned. <laughs> just in your flop. Bonk, bonk, Lois. Go to horny physics jail. <laughs> or, like, hold her better. Like, yeah, all right. I would buy it if he was, like, balancing her or, or even holding his arm, her, holding her arm, like, yeah, like, further like, you down. know, like, oh, like, oh, grip style. Predator handshake style. Yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Apparently, this is fantastic. I did not know this. Apparently, it was originally supposed to be a song. Marco Kidder was supposed to have a have a song in the movie. <laughs> okay, that would have been so much worse. <laughs> apparently, he heard her singing and was like, "We're just gonna have it be a spoken poem." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marco. I know. I know this was gonna be the start uh... of your singing career, but um, I would rather listen to a cat die. Uh, sorry. Hey, Marco. <laughs> so we can do this song, but here's the thing. Uh, we, we're gonna have to recast you. Um, <laughs> sorry. Ooh. I, I wonder if it was literally the same. Cause it does kind of, Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it, it rhymes. Yeah. Yeah. Can you read yeah, it, my mind? Do you know what you do to me? <laughs> Oh my goodness! I'll I'll sing it. I'll do the number. Nice, Dylan. Nice. You should do that whole thing and record it and release it on Spotify. Ooh. Oh my god. Um, is that what the not. kids do, or is it is it still SoundCloud? Yeah, no, maybe it's, it's, SoundCloud. I think it's SoundCloud. You should do SoundCloud. It's easier to do SoundCloud, I think. Do it, Dylan. Do it. Five, four, three. Do it, Dylan. Do it. Two. No. Do it. Uh, do it. Will you look at do me? It. Quivering. <laughs> Like a little girl. <laughs> Man, when this comes out and this is cut. This sounds like Richard <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> you can see right through uh. me. Can you read my mind? <laughs> Release the song cut. Nope, nope. That's all going to get cut. <laughs> no, it can't be. You have At least to put the Donner that cut. In. You have to put Give that us up. the Donner cut. <laughs> Man, I can't wait till the end of this podcast where Dylan just flies around backwards until we never recorded it. <laughs> yeah, there were lots of good parts about the movie, though, as you said before. Like, I, I mentioned this already, but um, Marlon Brando's jor was pretty good. I think the opening sequence, given that we had never... This was like the first Superman movie, really, in mainstream, I think it was fine to spend that much time on it. Honestly, I th- I thought that the his parents were or the Kents were pretty genuine. Uh, that was good. I mean, Christopher Reeve in general was really good. Like as he's just like I think he plays the part really well. In general, like a lot of the CGI or practical effects held up okay. Like it's it's shockingly not horrible. I feel like most movies from this era, with the exception of like Star Wars, are like horrible cgi hold up like you watch them and you're like oh my god i mean you guys were just saying like the dune cgi is worse and it came out 10 years later like it's bad yeah the dune cgi was rough yeah the I've, i haven't watched it but I, the, uh i've seen the scene where they like turn on their like shields oh, and then yeah. go at <laughs> it's like uh, blocks <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> like Roblox characters. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> so an interesting thing about the the Kents in this movie that you uh, you you just mentioned. This was the first time that both Kents weren't alive for Superman as an adult. Throughout the comic books at this point, Jonathan both Jonathan and and Martha Kent were alive well into Superman's adulthood. Um, and throughout comics, on and off, they kind of have or there's been different. I mean, different stories where where they've had John that uh, 
Clark's dad has died earlier on and somewhere where he's he's still around. Um, but this was the first one where it was like, oh, yeah, he's like a teenager and kind of that whole thing where it's like that there's just that, which I think was cool. I don't I, I know there's there's other stories that touch on it more. I, I don't love how they did it in Man of Steel, um, but in in other mediums where they've done it where Clark's dad dies of cancer and it kind of goes to show that no matter what he does sometimes you can't save everyone uh, I always just thought that was such a kind of a cool a, a cool caveat to put I mean it's the it's the superhero rite of passage right like your yeah your father figure uh, dying and... but just I mean you know like I I know in in spider-man's case in the comics with uncle ben it was a thing where it's like you could have prevented this and this was kind of you but like the guy who literally can do anything even even fix time no matter no matter what you do you cannot go back in time and stop your dad from getting no matter what you do why didn't he just fly around his dad a bunch to just reverse time on his (laughs) <laughs> his dad and to do what i mean it, he still would have gotten to the point where he would have died travel. at that point yeah well, yeah but, you but just there's keep nothing doing you can that. do you just keep well, doing i mean that. yeah i guess if that's how you want to live forever <laughs> you just make it <laughs> you just want time you can if just... you want to spend your entire life groundhogs dang someone <laughs> go for it but that's a lot <laughs> also just i just imagine like he's like 20 <laughs> And, and Superman's mom is still like sixty something. <laughs> okay, like, just, just like, like oh shit. Wait have him minute. have him do a hug and then do it. <laughs> I don't I don't think you can do it just that specific of a time. I think you have to fly the whole Earth. <laughs> I, I I don't think it works if the Earth keeps spinning in the same way. Well, otherwise, he would have changed time when he spun into the sewer, with how fast he was going to drill down. Mm, well, but he wasn't going. He was. He wasn't. He wasn't oh, going true. like he this. He was rotating. He was just rotating himself. Got it. Yeah. What What's Clark's mom's name? Martha. Why did you say that name? <laughs> oh, uh, I knew where it was the, going. The dumbest plot I fucking point. knew where it was going, and I still let myself walk into it. The uh, dumbest plot point <laughs> of any superhero uh, movie. I, did, I, I, I never watched Smallville, but I kind of like seeing like teenage angsty Clark Kent being like, I could win the football games. I could get the cheerleaders. I could do all these things. And he's like, you're just showboating, Clark. You don't need to do all that. And then, yeah, we get the worst effect Where in like, the world. Where he, like, kicks the football, like, a thousand yards. <laughs> I was expecting, once it cut to the train, I was expecting the football oh, to, like, yeah. hit the train. <laughs> gonna throw like, oh, shit. The mountains. I, was not, I was not expecting a really bad uh, running. him running with the train scene. Oh, okay. There was a split second where I feel like I saw the camera operator's reflection in the, in the train. <laughs> you, like, you probably like, did. Like it passed by the camera, yeah. and I feel like I saw the reflection <laughs> of the camera operator. You, you probably did. There's a scene. The scene after Lois like turns him down, and she goes into the ladies' room, and he like sad walks to the elevator. Yeah. You can like see like as he goes to around that corner, you can see the extra like who's walking past the camera, like look up and glance to see the camera or like a like an assistant director or something like signal him and then he walks <laughs> cuz he's like looking at these papers and he like looks up and then like he's going so this is kind of an interesting uh, and it in I don't know how much of it kind of crossed over uh but in Superman 2 they used like mirrors all over the daily planet to make it look like the hall was longer like when they have like the row of cubicles so uh, it's it's impressive that they didn't run into issues with that. So I have a feeling they had to film it like at specific angles to make sure nothing looked weird. Um, uh, you guys want to dive into a, a little a, a little bit of trivia? Yeah, let's do it. Sure. We talked about Marlon Brando. It's it's interesting because I don't think this was Brando's uh, best best uh, performance of his career. Um, it was pretty notorious that he had, uh, for lack of a better word, checked out at this point. Uh, in fact, he told Richard Donner uh, when they were doing like rehearsals, just record it because you know I mean we might get it just in the first in like the first rehearsal and we won't have to do it again. So like he was pretty adamant about like not wanting to do anything. In fact, um, 
this isn't part of the question. This is just a fun fact. Uh, how his face appeared in um, the Fortress of Solitude. He was like, why does it need to be my face? Let's just do like a green like donut or something. And then we can just do my voiceover work over it. <laughs> like he just was like, I don't need to be, I don't need to be on camera to do this. Um, so with that, he was, he was uh, pretty notorious for not really having his heart in this. Um, in fact, <clears throat> he couldn't bother to memorize the monologue he gives to baby Clark before he sends him in the rocket. Um, do you guys know how how he knew the lines? Do you need multiple choice? Does anyone want to know? Does anyone know before I give multiple choice? Were the lines in the baby crib thing that he put Superman into? Like, that's my uh, guess. So the the lines were were not in the rocket ship. Yeah, that's good. I it's, can tell you that. Um, is it cue so cards? The, here's here's a couple options. Um, he used cue cards off camera. That's option one. Option two, uh, he read the lines off of the baby's diaper. Or option three, he was fed the lines off screen by Richard Donner. It can't be the diaper, right? It'd be too small. I feel like it'd be too small for that. Uh, be impressive. Or that baby's got a big ass. Huge, huge baby. It wasn't a baby. It was actually a grown man in a diaper the whole time. The diaper went all down his I'm legs. Gonna, I guess, uh, I guess I'm, I'm going to, I mean, maybe he just, I think he just got fed the lines, maybe. Just someone literally told him uh, what to say. I'm, I'm going to say the classic cue cards. Ooh, it's the diaper. Wrong. He read the lines off of the diaper. Yes, the lines were on the baby's diaper. That is. That is, I don't know, maybe he only had, like, a couple that he used just to kind of, like, trigger oh, yeah. words. I don't know. But, like, yeah, yeah, he, he used the baby's diaper to, to read the lines off of, um, off, off screen. So, oh, my God. Yeah, that's how he was just kind of like, nah, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll do what we can. Um, all right, so that's uh, goose eggs on the board. We'll, we'll keep moving. So this one I'm not going to give you multiple choice. Uh, it's going to be too easy. So when Christopher Reeve uh, auditioned and was cast, he was uh, pretty skinny. In fact, to his first audition, he layered up. He he had worn a, like a T-shirt, a long sleeve shirt, and then he put on this kind of bulky blue sweater to make himself look bigger uh, when he went in to do his screen test. After he was cast in the role, he went on to pack. Uh, he went on to pack on the pounds, um, and he did this by following a workout regimen and getting trained by uh, another actor. Yeah, this actor right? that trained Christopher Reeve for this to help to help get his Superman build was famed for playing what Star Wars character? Oh. Huh. Star Wars character. Oh, I think I got it. I got it. All right. Dylan? That's my guess. I got a guess. Do I have to know the actual actor's name? Or no, I just have to care. No, nope. you have to get not looking for the actor. Guessing. Looking uh, for the character. Do we get bonus points if we can name the actor's name? No. <laughs> I mean, my, my guess is going to be Chewbacca? I'm going to guess David Pro's is Darth Vader. It was, okay. in fact, Darth Vader. Yeah. David Pro's a big fucking guy. <laughs> yes, yeah, so do you guys remember in A Clockwork Orange... Oh um, yeah. yeah, the big dude who kept carrying around the the guy that they yep. that they like paralyze or whatever. Yeah, that was him. So yeah. he's he's a he's a pretty big yoked dude. So I was because th- I was th- I thought Chewbacca for a second, but I was like, no, he was just tall. He wasn't like built. I was like maybe it's Han Solo, but that doesn't yeah, that's, make that's sense exactly either. like my thought process. I was like oh, it's yeah, it's Darth Vader. I was, Vader, like, I was yeah. like Harrison Ford, but he's All not right. like cut or like he's not like. <laughs> Ian McDermott, <laughs> the emperor. <laughs> so we talked about uh, Lex Luthor's lair being in this uh, subway, I don't know, hideout. This this was uh, shot in somewhere overseas. I think it was shot in, in the UK. Um, but obviously it's a Metropolis uh, subway station. Apparently Metropolis is in Ohio. Because there is a bag from an Ohio restaurant chain that can be seen. Oh no! In in the lair. Uh, 
I'll go ahead and give you guys options. But from what food chain is this? Is this bag? Is it from Tony Paco's? <laughs> is it Arthur Treacher's? Marco's Pizza? Or Skyline Chili? Skyline Chili. I'm locking it in. Skyline, Skyline Chili. Chili. Is it not too new? Has this shit been around since the 70s? No. I think Skyline Chili's been around for a while. I don't, think, I don't know if Marco's has oh, been around since like, then. What was the first two? Tony Paco's? And Tony Paco's. Arthur been Treacher's. Around for a while. I'm what going with is. Tony Paco's. I don't even know what the hell that is, but you don't know you don't what Tony, Tony Paco's. I'm, I'm not well versed in the Ohio ness. Wow, you, I guess. Jesus Christ! Watch but Toledo is basically Michigan. You, you chungus! Uh, you were both wrong. Fuck. It was uh, Arthur Treacher's. I don't know what that is. So Arthur Treacher's was a big uh, chain in Ohio. It grew to like, I think all kind of throughout the Midwest up to like I think it was like 800 locations. Now there's only two. Um, I they're like a fish. It's like a fish sandwich, fish and chips type, type fast food place. Um, yeah, you can see an Arthur Treacher's bag sitting in Lex Luthor's hideout. I think I saw the guys who did Superman are from Ohio, so from Cleveland or something. Uh, yeah, Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster. Um, uh, interesting fun fact. I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about. I think I can talk about it. My brother's working on his his design firm. Uh, is working on a Superman statue that's going to be uh, in downtown Cleveland. That's pretty so, cool. Um, he knows what it looks like. My dad has apparently seen it. Uh, they're not allowed to talk about what, what it is or what everything looks it's like. like the, but the RoboCop that was in Detroit. Just you know? Left out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of, but, you know, cooler because it's a kind of I mean, I guess at once actually from the city, Superman doesn't have fucking ties to Ohio. He's just fucking created there by some nerds. Wow. Real mature, Dylan. Real mature. Uh, I've got one more, and then I've got a tiebreaker You probably don't question. need it. So. Um, you don't need it. This one's... I'm going to sweep. All right. Cool. Which director was originally offered the chance to direct Superman uh, until the producers <laughs> balked at his, at his asking price? Was it George Lucas? Yeah, Steven probably. Spielberg, John Carpenter, or Stanley Kubrick? Uh, I'll, I'll let you go first, Cam, since you're winning. I feel like if you try and get Kubrick at this time, you know that he's going to cost a lot of money. So you were like, yeah, maybe not. Uh, Spielberg was already, well, I mean, George Lucas was also kind of successful. With Star, well, pretty successful with Star Wars. I guess I'd have, I mean, John Williams did the score. I'm going to say George Lucas. Um, Carpenter would be funny, though. It could be him, I guess. Oh, because I think Halloween. Because maybe they thought, maybe they were, maybe that's why they were surprised at his asking price. Maybe they were like, wait, why do you want that much money? I don't think so, because I think Halloween came out around this time. It's got to be one of the other three. I don't think it was George Lucas, because I don't think they, like, Star Wars is still going on. So I don't think they'd be like, hey, man, you want to come do this, too? I mean, granted, like, obviously he didn't... Der- well, okay, you say still going on, but there was a lot of time between Star Wars and Star Wars episode... Well, I guess five now. There was a lot of time. Episode one came out in the 70s. Or, sorry, four, whatever. Five came out in the 80s, though, I think. And then six came out in the later in the 80s. I think. I could be wrong on that, but... I can't remember, did the last... One of them came out in eighty. 80- one was seven. A New Hope was, I think, seventy four. Empire was eighty. One of them was Empire eighty. Okay, yeah. then Return was eighty three. I think. Yeah, yeah, it was. So there were a good six years between New Hope and Strikes Back. Part of me wants to say Kubrick. I feel like he would ask the most. I feel like they wouldn't be surprised at the asking. Yeah, price. I mean, I mean, well, maybe he would have asked a shit ton because it was something just that he didn't really want to do. Um, I'm going to go Spielberg. He wasn't like, I feel like he wasn't quite the Spielberg that we know today. I'm trying to think like maybe Close Encounters came out already. Maybe Jaws had come out already. I think both of those probably. So he wasn't like, like Jurassic Park came out in the 90s, you know, Schindler's List was 90. Like a lot of the big stuff I think came out later. So I'm going to go Spielberg. Spielberg. Man, it's like I'm going to be pulling out that tiebreaker. It was nice. Steven Spielberg. 
Jaws okay. came out in 75. So at the time that they were casting for this, or that they were looking to hire someone for this movie, um, Spielberg was still, I mean, realistically, he had done uh, his TV movie Duel, another TV movie Something Evil, um, and that was that was pretty much it. Close Encounters, I think, came out around the same time. Oh, actually, it came out in 77. So um, by the time this movie came out, he had Jaws okay. had been released, uh, but... The producers uh, did not. They they balked at his at the salary that Spielberg asked for, and they said they decided they wanted to wait until they saw how quote his little fish movie uh, <laughs> did at the box office. Um, Jaws went on to be literally like the first summer blockbuster, and was a huge success. And Steven Spielberg went on to do other projects as opposed to doing Superman. So, way to go! Uh, the producers on this were apparently like notoriously not people that directors and filmmakers wanted to work with um that's why richard donner was was uh fired margo margo kidder also uh was kind of uh frustrated with the the producers that's why after superman 2 and superman 3 she's only in like a couple minutes of the movie so let's go ahead and uh, we'll we'll dive in here to the tiebreaker. This is a uh, we'll just go closest. I'm not worried about closest without going over. Uh, so like I said, they shot a lot of Superman one and Superman two kind of going on simultaneously with the plan that they were going to release it a year later. Uh, when Richard Donner was uh, fired from production on Superman two, can you tell me closest closest to tell me how much of Superman two had Richard Donner shot? when he was fired like a percentage or yes percentage like i might go for the meme and it'd be like 95 percent i'll go for 69 percent. nice oh nice man <laughs> uh it was 75 percent. he had shot three quarters of the movie Let's go uh when he was when he was fired um by the the sulkins one that i didn't know how to turn into a question but i thought was super interesting which this one doesn't really make sense because this movie came out in what seventy eight. Yeah. So after after Rocky kind of came out and blew up, uh, Sylvester Stallone lobbied pretty hard to to play Superman. Oh God. Sylvester Stallone found out that it was Marlon Brando who vetoed the the casting. Huh. Why? Allegedly, I I don't know. Um, but allegedly, there was another person who had been cast in a famous movie that Marlon Brando notoriously vetoed. Oh, I vaguely recall this, but I don't remember what it was. I feel like we talked about Burt Reynolds. Okay. In what movie? I guess uh, for The Godfather. Oh. Okay. Burt Reynolds, I guess, was supposed to be cast as Sonny in The Godfather. And, um, oh, I like that. Brando, Brando apparently told uh, an interviewer that Francis would never have never have cast Burt Reynolds, even though it was uh, kind of talked about that he'd been cast. Um, I guess Sylvester Stallone went on uh, a late night show and pretty much said he has no respect for Marlon Brando as an actor or as a man. <laughs> yeah, this shocked a lot of people because obviously a lot of film stars at their at that time were modeling their careers or trying to model their careers after Marlon Brando, and he was the first to kind of come out. But I guess a lot of people, um, Christopher Reeve even said, I think he was on Letterman, maybe in the 80s. I can't remember. Uh, but he did an interview where he was basically like, yeah, Marlon Brando just phoned it in. He didn't try. He, he just showed up to cash the check. It was it was no, you know, I, I would, would have loved to have gotten to work with Mar the Marlon Brando people talk about, but that was not my experience in working with him on this movie. One thing, otherwise, I just want to hit on this fucking theme song, man. John Williams, just another fucking home run. This is the John Williams Stan account. This leads. Uh, this leads into something I wanted to talk about. Does this rank in top five John Williams scores, or at least like themes? I mean, yeah. So those are two different top questions. Three. Themes for sure. Scores is questionable, but themes for sure. Uh, yeah. I guess that's that's yeah. I would say in terms of themes yes yeah i think this score is okay the theme is the theme is probably in my top i think it would be i'd say 
Star Wars, Raiders. Vader's theme has got to be up there, like the Imperial March. Yeah, I'd say Star Wars, Raiders. I'd put this over Jurassic Park, but that's just my personal. Yeah, this one's this one's in the top three for me. I, I mean, Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Raiders, Harry Potter, Jaws. But the theme for Jaws? Do 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 do. Yeah, do, that's like true. that's so iconic. Harry Potter, so iconic. I mean, hell, this is so iconic. I've never seen this movie, and I heard that theme song, and I was like, I know this. How do I know that? Like, yeah. I feel like it's been used more like since then. They, um, they, they did incorporate this theme into Justice League as a nod, but yeah, I just, I don't know. This one for me is it. It hits. Uh, I, I love it. It's like I said, I think I would put it in the the Raiders, Star Wars, and this theme. I think those would be like the the three for me that I would be like, this is this is the, the I think like the S tier. That's what we need. We need a we need a tier ranking of theme. I mean, if it's not top five, it's it's on the border, I will say. Like I think the ones I named here You don't have this as top five? No. Ha- I feel like it is top Harry five. Po- I think Harry Potter's gotta go. Yeah, yeah. Out of the top five. Absolutely not. Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. Get out the, of the fuck out of five. here. Hey, hey. It's good, but it's, it's iconic. Five. If you hear the first two notes, you're like, oh shit, the Harry Potter thing. I mean, it's, that's the same with any of the themes this man writes. That's uh, that's like, Not the Superman one. If I heard the first two notes of the Superman one, I would have been like, I, I don't know. Are you serious? Come on, that's BS. I, I don't know. I think. I guarantee you, is, if I played you three that went dun dun dun, you'd be like, oh shit, I know that. Yeah, I. I don't know. I feel like, you know, obviously, like, being a great theme is just, like, the entry price to get in. But top five, I don't think Harry Potter's in there. That bull, you, that had some barnacles. I think Star Wars I is there. Say, I think Raiders is there. I think this is there. I don't know that Jurassic Park's there. Yeah, I would. Uh, I don't know. All right, this, all right, you guys, I don't I don't <laughs> believe anything just coming out of your mouth now at this point. All right, I'm going to look it the up. The Jurassic Park Godwin's. theme is literally probably one of the most iconic movie themes of all time. Oh, yeah, when the fucking meme came out and it was like, what are those? <laughs> I'll be honest. I wouldn't have. I, I Before we did Jurassic Park for the pod, I don't think I would have picked up on it hearing it i would have been like oh that sounds familiar but it wouldn't have been like oh that's jurassic park so here's the other problem is i actually think two themes of his that are in the top five are from star wars i think the main title theme and i think the imperial march are both so iconic i think they both go in and then you got uh raiders for sure and yeah i mean i think it would be this and then i like i might round it out with jurassic park there's others I haven't accounted for, like Schindler's List, maybe Saving Private Ryan. I don't know. That uh, I mean, I don't those think either of those memorable. Ne- neither of those really had like, yeah, memorable. You're telling me, you're telling me when they fucking enter the park and they see the bronchiosauruses, and the fucking theme is going. I that said is that, not. I said that is that, not I said one of the that, most that iconic park. movie moments of all time, Ben. <laughs> I said that it goes in the top five. Okay, then Harry Potter's out. Sorry. Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't hear dun, 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 without seeing Christopher Reeve run and opening his fucking shirt to reveal the Superman logo. <laughs> this is the fucking Superman theme. This was the Superman theme. Fuck, it still is the Superman theme. The movie sucks. Zero out of ten. Let's move on to review so I can shit on this piece of garbage. Oh, I'm just kidding. Wow. <laughs> but then it's like, I mean, Jaws is also iconic, but I wouldn't say it's like a banger, but it is iconic. I don't know. I feel like at least when I think of John Williams, I think Star Wars, Jurassic Park, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter, but that's that might just be because I've watched all the Harry Potter films a billion times. And then it's yeah. probably either this or Jaws, I mean, I I've never seen Schindler's List, so like, I can't really talk about the Schindler's List theme, but like, and, I mean, I know Close Encounters. Yeah, I don't know. See, E.T. John Williams to John Williams to me, it's it's Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and it's Superman. Those are like that's 
those are the three movies I immediately think of when I think of John Williams. This is part of the show where we uh, we, we scour Letterbox, we scour IMDb so, for some less than favorable reviews. Some of them people don't like the movie. Some of them just memes, but. I found I found a couple good ones. Uh, I'll lead off with this one, Ben, that you might uh, you might feel pretty at home with. Maybe I don't know. It says uh, from Yi Yi Jin on uh, Letterbox gave it a three and a half stars. It says this is my dad's favorite film. He even brought my mom to see it on their first date. Thirty years later, when this was on TV, my mom admitted to all of us that this was a pretty shitty date. Because my dad was so transfixed by the movie, he didn't pay attention to her at all. What a nerd. <laughs> Ooh. Ouch. c c c combo breaker. You just imagine the dad turns this on every time. He's like, oh, kids, let me tell you the story of me taking your mom on our first date. After 30 years, she's finally like, this date sucked. You're lucky I kept going out with you. <laughs> He's like, oh man, I was gonna, I was gonna play the Superman theme at our thirtieth anniversary <laughs> party. We, we renewed our vows to this song. <laughs> oh my god! My my my, my, wed- my wedding vows were that Paul Margo <laughs> theater wrote. <laughs> Can you read my mind? <laughs> if you need someone to fly to, fly to me. Everyone's just looking around like, just, oh, is, that the, is that the Superman <laughs> poem? <laughs> Everyone's just sitting there like, you know, the, I I just know there's two people. In, I just picture like two people in the church. He's like in the back of the church. Just like, that scene didn't even make sense. <laughs> the physics were all over the place. They were flying by <laughs> fingertips. He doesn't transfer his power to her. <laughs> She would have been she would have been flailing like a bag in the wind if this were real. <laughs> she should have just been a rag doll. <laughs> okay, but for real. <laughs> uh from from the shook one on uh from the shook one on Letterbox, gave it three stars out of five, said, Funny, exactly forty years after LSD was invented, they produce a movie tailor made for a trip through colorful Gaga land. Being lost in a world consisting of exuberant special effects and stupid humor, this really feels like the great granddad of modern Marvel slash DC menaces. I mean, yeah, this this kind of was like the grandfather <laughs> of those movies. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, it kind of is realistically formulaic kind of to what the Marvel formula is, right? You spend like your first kind of they're, especially in like phase one or even newer phase when you're introducing a new superhero you got like your first like third of the movie origin you story the the character you give them the origin story the second half you introduce the villain they have some sort of evil pop plot but like it's not like super bad you know like it's it's bad but it's not like super dark normally it's still kind of light-hearted and then the final third you have like the the climax of the movie slash superhero battle maybe in that middle part of the movie you might see the hero doing something that you know is they might be doing something cool like catching a helicopter or you know saving up a plane that's gonna gonna crash or whatever but i mean yeah realistically it's it's the formula is it normal for newspapers to have their own helicopters um well okay so again here's Here's the like interesting a so, some yeah, news I mean, some news yes but I don't know about newspaper um yeah I I think that was different yeah I don't know um I mean, maybe I don't know maybe they chartered it for something I I don't know um but in the comic books I don't know if I think it was a little bit later than when the movie came out Lois and Clark did end up actually working for like a news station for a brief point. I'm surprised they haven't kind of gone back into that because uh, print media is dying. So I'm kind of shocked that they haven't really changed their, you know, investigative journalist to like investigative reporter for, I don't know, X, Y, Z newspapers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, su- I'm surprised she's just not writing for BuzzFeed at this point, right? S- hard hitting news. Thanks, guys. 
appreciate the reaction to the BuzzFeed hard hitting news they, joke. They're out of business. Uh-huh. Loved it. <laughs> Loved it. Uh huh. Loved it. Uh, sure, they don't even do it. news anymore. I have no idea. I just remember there was a brief how time are where we, like, how are we ever gonna know what type of pop tart we are? You know, that's really okay. Their news department was actually okay. Well, that's that's what I was getting at because I remember <laughs> that thing where it was like, oh, BuzzFeed for all the quirky quizzes, and then it was like, wait a minute, <laughs> BuzzFeed out here, BuzzFeed's out here just like fucking dropping major news breaks. Like, yeah. what, what is this shit? Yeah. All right, last one from Poe four six seven on IMDb gave it a one out of ten stars. Um, titled "Still Stinks" from March twenty fifth two thousand nine. <laughs> Uh, I fell for the hype. You will believe this man can fly. Boy, did I want to see this one. Superman has been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. He's always there. Maybe not up front where he used to be when I was a kid, but he's there nonetheless. It's hard to express the kind of love one feels for a character one has grown, grown up with. Even now, after all these years, the eyes well up and the heart breaks the memory of a lonely childhood spent living vicariously through comic books. This guy was there parentheses in there for me when no one else was for so long i finally stopped buying comic books when they went from a reasonable 12 cents to a whopping 15 cents oh i'd (laughs) oh i'd bought the occasional gold key or dell comic at the higher rate but they were few and far between dc and marvel had been my mainstays by the time superman the movie came along my taste ran more to sports like box sports like boxing and real books books that had no illustrations on the covers or other than on the covers, and women. But just seeing that familiar blue and red costume again was all it took. I made up my mind to go see this movie. Something vital had been rekindled in me. My heart soared as it hadn't been in, in a very long time. Maybe not in a reason-to-live kind of way, but certainly in a I-can't-wait-to-see-you-again old friend kind of way. This one meant that much to me at the time. Then I saw it. Seeing Superman the movie reminded me of the day I was propositioned by my very first girlfriend. She'd literally become a hooker in the few years since I'd known her and didn't even recognize me. It's amazing how many people there are out there who'd willingly sell their soul if only there were a buyer. And that just ends there. <laughs> that was weird. What? <laughs> I saw Superman. It was like when I uh, when my ex-girlfriend became a hooker and tried to have sex with me. Um... But what about the movie? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah to to therapy, my guy. Yeah. That's horrible. Also, the bro, the, it, it, it's bro not that may I interest may I interest you in a Dune two popcorn <laughs> bucket, my guy? Because you sound like you need hey, it. That would have been a reason to live, not a I can't wait to see you again, old friend. <laughs> it's only an, I can't wait to see you again, old friend. After you pull it out of storage, <laughs> <laughs> only when Dune three comes out. Yeah, exactly. Or, or it comes out on streaming on Max. You can pull out the popcorn bucket. <laughs> it's a little sticky and musty. <laughs> well, I hope you cleaned it after. You know, popcorn gets this buttery and it, you know, it Pop- leaves a residue. Popcorn? You really oh. want to clean it. <laughs> yeah, you really want to clean it. <laughs> My Arrakis. My Dune <laughs> popcorn bucket. The Shy Halusi. <laughs> <laughs> i hope you guys made enough of these jokes oh, we in did. the last there's, episode there's about five minutes of us <laughs> oh yeah popcorn, oh yeah there's 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 quite a bit of time cam and i the goob squad we'd never seen superman the movie so you're gonna get two fresh ratings from us and then ben is gonna give you a nostalgia rating on probably his like 80th viewing now it's gonna give you an updated rating so uh Cam, lead us off. What did you think on Superman the movie? The thing that struck me with this one is um, I feel like it started at a higher rating when I started watching the movie and then finished lower. Like, when I first started watching the movie, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. This feels like an 8 out of 10 for me. And then, as we kind of talked about, there was the tone, weirdness. I hated Lex Luthor. I hated, hated, hated the ending. It was horrible. Through everything that it went through, I'm going to leave it at like a six. I think there are definitely strong points about the movie that we've covered. Christopher Reeve is really good. Um, and I do recognize that it had a lot of impact on the movies we get today. Um, so that's all great. But yeah, I just uh, wish that they had done a couple things differently. But otherwise, it was like 
decent. Like, I would still recommend to people to check it out, but it's not my favorite. Also never have seen this movie, but, like, the score. I, I knew the score. I knew the meme of the ending. Like, it's kind of permeated pop culture so far uh, beyond, you know, just kind of being the granddaddy of superhero movies, but, like, it's permeated culture beyond that. I feel like, for me, having seen... Uh, Superman Returns, Man of Steel, Batman v Superman. I feel like, to me, Christopher Reeve is Superman. When I think of the character of Superman and Clark Kent, like Christopher Reeve kind of personifies that, and he does that job so well, like we talked about earlier, of kind of keeping those two separate. And even his like body is like he's kind of like the hunched over awkward guy when he's Clark Kent, and then he's straight straightens up and he's Superman, you know. Uh, cinematography is pretty damn good. Um, it's kind of interesting watching these older movies, especially since like, I feel like most of the older ones we've watched haven't been as sci-fi or effect heavy as like Dune and, uh, Superman now have been. And it's interesting seeing how they kind of tackled some of these things. Story. Eh, it's okay. Like, yeah, Lex Luthor kind of sucks, but I think his plan is evil enough and the, the, the end goal part is like just enough to get us this crazy action sequence at the end of like shit. Superman has to put the earth back together basically and then save all these people. Yeah. I'm I'm kind of with cam where I was like, eh, it's pretty good so far. And then once you get the corniness, it's like, all right, I kind of wish it was a little more serious with the super villain part, but I'm going to leave it at a five out of 10. I'm not the biggest superhero person in general, so like maybe that's kind of affecting it. But I think it's good. I would I would recommend you watch it just for like if you want to see where superhero movies have come from. I would, I'd watch it again, honestly. It it wasn't bad. Okay, this hasn't been as 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 poor as I was expecting it. Um. So I think going in, I I probably had this at like a seven seven and a half. When you, uh, when it's been a, a well, I don't think I've seen this movie in, it's been years. I, I don't think I've seen it probably since I was in high school. It's hard to separate Superman 1 and Superman 2. I mean, there's things that you obviously separate. A lot of the, obviously the general Zod stuff to Superman 2. But I think the movies become better when you put those two together. I think it is definitely a, a um some greater than its parts type experience with Superman one and Superman two. But with this movie itself, yeah, I think you guys touched on, on quite a, a couple things that I a hundred percent agree with Christopher Reeve is Superman. I, I don't know that there has been a, another actor yet. I'm excited to see David. I, I'm going to butcher his last name. Corn sweat, corn sweet. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, I'm excited to see, one, what what James Gunn plans on doing uh, tonally with the movie. I'm really looking forward to a trailer on that to see what his his thought is. Um, two, I'm excited to see if he kind of brings that same hope and positivity that I think you get from, from Christopher Reeve, that real kind of embodiment of the character. He's just phenomenal in this. Uh, so good. Gene Hackman is Lex Luthor. Um, the real estate scheme is a theme that continues. But in terms of what Lex Luthor as a character was at this point in time, I mean, Gene Hackman's, I mean, pretty, pretty accurate. Gener- I mean, he was kind of generic supervillain super villain just doing bad shit because he's a bad person. The biggest thing from this movie is, my God, I, I thought there was more Superman in this movie. This movie actually needs more of Christopher Reeve as Superman, whether that be like actually doing something with Lex Luthor as opposed to him just kind of flying out, grabbing him and dropping him off in prison. We didn't talk about that at all, how there's like no real major confrontation. It's just like, oh yeah, he flew in, picked him up, flew him to prison, dropped him off, the end. That's it. That's how it goes. I don't love Margot Kidder as as Lois Lane. Just, I I don't know. She's just never been my favorite. Overall, I think from a seven to a seven and a half, I'd, I'd probably bring it down to like a, maybe a six. It's not it's it's not the end all be all. It's a really positive thing for what would come. Superman 2 
knowing what comes with Superman two, definitely like this kind of kickstarting it and it kind of being an overarching movie one and two definitely helps. Um, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it, give it a watch, uh, watch both. If you have the time, just watch one and two. Uh, it's, it's definitely worth it. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to rate and subscribe, share it with your friends and family, leave a rating wherever you listen. Um, really helps us out and a review. If you can, uh, hit up the show notes to make yourself a black Superman and uh, hit up the Casker links to uh, get that rum delivered to your door. Uh, you can check out Superman the movie as a recording on HBO Max or Max. Check us out next time. As always, watch responsibly.